This is the untold story of my first ever solo travel trip. After making it through the border from Ecuador, I had arrived in Colombia, the final country for me in the South American continent. It turned out to be one of the best times in my life, discovering so much I had no idea about. A deep and recent history, vastly diverse landscapes, and a music festival in Bogota awaited. This is Adventures. After making it all the way to the capital Bogota and meeting back up with some travel friends, it was time to head to a stereo picnic music festival. It was a long trip back and forth from our accommodation each day, and there was an almost on cue daily thunderstorm in the afternoon. This, mixed with not having much sleep, led to a few crazy days. Recovery was definitely needed after that, and I was once again on my own, heading on a very windy all-day bus around the mountains to Medellin. Not a great way to travel on a three-day hangover. The journey was worth it. I now had no solid plan or place to go. I was without restraint and free to go with the flow. I definitely did that in Medellin, staying for at least a week longer than originally planned. It's such a wonderful place, full of things to see and do on walking tours and day trips. It's amazing to see the city's history, from being the most dangerous place in the world some 30 years ago to now. Definitely not right. not bad. We headed on a day trip to Pablo Escobar's mansion in Guatapé. Now abandoned and run down, it was amazing to see everything, like spaces where money would be hid, where the drivers and guards would live, and of course his main house. I struggled and climbed 740 steps atop a rock that looked out over a huge man-made lake. As well as seeing a submerged town in the very same water. I also got to see the city's El Clasico game between the new and old football teams. It was the most insane football game ever. So much passion and we had no idea the game had even started. We could barely see the pitch for the banners, streamers, paper and noise. Not to mention getting knocked over and falling down five rows when the team scored. They celebrate hard in Medellin. It was after here that Marina, who I had travelled with for three months, got in touch to say that she was staying at a hostel in Santa Marta on the north coast. So north it was. Along the coast, I got my first real dose of getting sick on the road after some street food whilst exploring the old town in Cartagena. But there could have been worse views when getting sick, although the heat did not always help. I moved along the coast to Santa Marta to see Marina again. After resting up in Santa Marta for some time, I took a trek into the jungle on the Lost City Trail. This was four days of hiking to get to the remains of a very remote village. Rocky steep terrain to lush humid jungles, this was certainly an epic trek. There are still indigenous tribes in the jungle. The shaman of a local village blessed our group. We each got a small bracelet made from string with four beads, which is to mean good health. Further along the coast led me to more travel friends and short stops in the Tyrona National Park, sleeping in a hammock on the beach. and Palomino, a beach place where Katrine from the Santiago hostel was staying.
By this point, I had reached the top of South America. I had traveled all the way from Patagonia, with summer in the UK a couple of months away and a dwindling bank account, I decided that maybe it was time to head home, but the fun way. It was time to leave South America via a sailboat to Panama through the San Blas Islands. 